Captain, we have them. We've established Transporter Lock, the Star Trek Discovery podcast. Join Ken and Sabriel each week as they explore strange new episodes, seek out new plots and new characters, and boldly go where no podcast has gone before. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh, wait, okay. Hello, and welcome to Transporter Lock. Today is December 31st, 2022. And if you are receiving this message, I'm sorry, it's already too late for your ship. But uh, I am Captain Sabriel Meston, and we will deal with that problem by the end of the episode. And I am joined once again, as always, by Chief Engineer Ken Gagney. Welcome, everybody. Hello, hello, how <laughs> is everybody on this happy new year? We are all waiting for the celestial ball to drop and ring in a new star date. Mm-hmm. And someone turned all our lights to bright red. Well, it kind of reminds me of that party room that we had a couple of years ago with all the <laughs> disco yes. lights dancing. That was awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, so we are here. <laughs> great segue, great segue. So we are here to talk about disco dance and... Uh, the last, what, like seven or so episodes of Prodigy this first season. That's right. So Prodigy has concluded its first season over the course of the last calendar year. They aired 20 half-hour episodes with commercials. And we reviewed the first two episodes of the second half of the first season. <laughs> well, I don't know why they did I that. Put, uh, I like how, actually, uh, Memory Alpha says this is part three. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> What are the other parts? There was a hiatus for Discovery. Yeah. Part. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. They've had multiple hiatuses. We are on part three of season one. They're doing worse no. than Battlestar Galactica. No, <laughs> no, we're not. We're on, we're on the second half. And we reviewed Asylum and Let Sleeping Borgs Lie, which was episodes 11 and 12. Uh, we did that last month when we also reviewed the end of the third season of Lower Decks. So here we're t- here to talk about... The second half in its entirety, really, maybe some favorite moments, favorite characters, favorite arcs in the last eight episodes of Prodigy. Uh, Sabriel, I know that when we first watched the first half of the first season of (laughs) Prodigy, uh, you were pretty lukewarm on it. You said you would only watch it if there was something on in the background. Uh, has anything changed for you? Oh, man. Here I was going to tease, like, has Sabriel's opinion changed on this? Maybe we'll find an answer by the end. Maybe we can just jump right ahead to it. Maybe Sabriel actually kind of enjoys Prodigy now. <gasps> Save for one part. One part or one character? One character. Can I guess which character? Uh, please be my guest. I'm sure you'll get it correct. <laughs> Is it Murph? Uh, oh, you're so close. No, not no, Murph. No, I don't think so. Uh, Is it the voice of the ship's computer? <laughs> no because that, that, that's nope 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 uh is it uh, doll you are 100 percent correct uh, doll guess. should take a long walk up a short uh airlock oh, oh, oh. that is harsh he's just Actually, a teenager what i told my friend char uh was like you know what he needs to just be shipped off to Star- starfleet academy and come back for maybe a cameo in like seasons five or six <laughs> Just like Wesley Crusher. He can be one of Tilly's students. There we go. There you go. Um, you know, even um, though they're separated by like a millennium, but that's he, fine. he can fly off in the future that way you don't have to worry about him. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's already time travel in this mm-hmm. show, which I was not expecting, and to be honest, found a yeah. little confusing. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, which episode? Tell us. Well, you don't need to know the episode name because most of us probably don't know that. But which episode was that one about again? I mean, I'm not sure if it was the first half or the second half, but it's like where Chakotay goes mm. to the future and sometime mm-hmm. between when he went to the future, when he arrived in the future, Starfleet made first contact with this alien race and they mm-hmm. started a civil war. And so Chakotay sent the ship back without him on it. And that's how it ended up encased in this prison planet. And mm-hmm. also the people from that civil war future also went back in time and arrived at different points in time. And now Chakotay is trapped in a future that has already been changed. <sighs> uh, so you're not a fan of, of basically the overarching uh, behind the, the back the background plot, I guess. Yeah. I find time travel to be overdone in star Trek. And this mm-hmm. one was 
it involved just too many temporal points and drawing connections between them. Uh huh. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so uh, yeah. Uh, in case someone hasn't quite caught that, this is basically the premise of Prodigy. Now we know where Captain Chakot is disappeared to, um, and uh, all of our people are um, are uh, people like Gwen and her dad. They are all people from the future, and uh, they're trying to stop the Federation. And that basically is our big huge plot point for the latter latter half of the season. Um. See, I didn't mind that whole time travel. I, I am a time travel Glenn. I love time travel. And so I thought that was fascinating. But I can I mean, see how it can be a frustration too. I, I, th- I think they could have done the time travel less complicated. Like if they had just said, oh, Starfleet made first contact with our planet. They caused a civil war. So I came back in time to stop it. I think that would be fine. But then the whole mm-hmm. uh, Chakotay being caught in the future, the protostar going to the future and coming back. And also the aliens coming back at different points in time. Those mm-hmm. complications I found unnecessary. Gotcha, gotcha. I, I can, yeah. I can I can go with that. But now they have the opportunity to, like, we can have a random villain show up whenever, if we need them to. It's true. It's uh, kind of like that old uh, TV show, Time Tracks. Man, I haven't thought about a show up forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good show. Deserves a remake. If we can have a second season of A New Quantum Leap, why can't we have a first season of A New Time Tracks? <laughs> um. Oh, right. Gosh, uh, one of my, uh, I'm going to get rid of my least favorite episode so I can not talk about it. And I can talk about the ones I actually did like a lot. Cool. Um, uh, the one where Masquerade, this is the one they went to the neutral zone, which that part was neat. I like seeing them deal with the Romulans and whatnot. But um, this is the episode where they meet a geneticist and they find out Dahl is a mixture of like a whole bunch of Federation people. He's an augment. Um, I want to connect everything to Soong once again. <laughs> <laughs> that was in my oh. show notes. I wanted to ask you how frustrating it is, at least for me. Is it also for you that Brett Spiner just shows up everywhere? At least this time he didn't. He didn't have actually a role. But you're right. Like, it, uh, no. Uh, to me, I, I'm just like, of course, because uh, you know what? It is a kids show. Uh, we don't need to. We can connect things to the bigger part of the series that you know, a kid is like. Do you do the Leo pointing meme and like, <laughs> ah, there it is. Yeah. But, but uh, actually I hadn't thought of this before just now, but so there've been multiple Soongs and mm-hmm. some of them have been interested in robotics. Some of them have been interested in genetics. We saw in Star Trek Enterprise when I think Eric Soong showed up mm-hmm. and he was like, you know what? Maybe genetics isn't the future. Maybe it's robotics. And that was like 150 years before Prodigy. So which soon created Dahl? Um, didn't they say that? Didn't they, was it specifically a soon or was it his research? It's, it's a little flaky on me now. I just don't remember. Maybe okay. you don't either. I don't remember either, but that is a good point, And you might be correct. And that, and that would make sense to me. And I will withdraw my <laughs> objection. Uh, let's see. Oh. Oh, no, right here. Uh, created by protégés of Eric Soon. Okay. Sort of... mm-hmm. Great. Okay, I'll allow it. I apologize for missing that detail. I now love I mean, Prodigy. It was a month ago. and <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> nothing else has happened in the last month, right? That's right. <laughs> uh, uh, but that was my least favorite episode. Uh, like, cause it was a, I, I mean, not because of that reveal, but because it was a doll-centered one. I can't stand that kid. I liked how they took down the Tal Shiar. But mm-hmm. you're right, Dahl using large words just because he's suddenly been augmented. Like, genetics does not confer vocabulary. Mm-hmm. Indubitably. <laughs> oh my gosh. This Dahl reveal, um, I swear, it did not sound new to me. I swear. I, I'm interested. I actually thought about going back and listening to some of the older discussions about this show. Cause I swear I said something along those lines hmm. and I don't, and I could be entirely making that up. Uh, I, I just like, it didn't sound like new information to me. And uh, I want to go back and like, am I just misremembering it? Am I attributing something I didn't actually say or, well, uh, or was well, I there- they were there was that earlier episode where they were on the planet filled with plants that like made their dreams come true and all doll wanted was to find his parents Mm -hmm. and there were silhouettes of his parents i don't remember it being floated previously in the series 
that he might not have parents or that he might be genetically yeah, I, created. I, barely, I don't I remember, remember if we discussed it either. I barely remember. I, I don't usually go back and listen, but I'm tempted to. <laughs> uh, wh- any other episodes you did not like? Uh, I mean, we talked about the Borg one before. Well, a lot of people love yeah. that one, I find. But uh, uh, that was my one. I'm like, uh. <laughs> But um, how about you? Is there any that you... Oh, I mean, we talked about the time travel thing. Is that your answer yeah. too? I liked Preludes, where we saw like the uh, origin story for a lot of the characters. Mm-hmm, that you know, was Fire... fun. Yeah, Firefly did something similar. It's nice to get that backstory. Uh, I think I think the one that I found most amusing was Jankum Pogs. <laughs> Jankum Pogs. Because n- now we know why he refers to himself by his own name, because the ship's AI required him to do so. Like that was <laughs> that was a habit he almost intentionally developed because that's true for many of us. Like I've seen people use Microsoft Word in a certain way. And they're like, oh, that's because that's the way Word works. And it wants me to do it that way, even though it's not intuitive to me. And I was like, Mm -hmm. you know, you can change the settings. Like you can (laughs) customize this stuff to accommodate you instead of the other way around. They're like, why? Jacob Pog doesn't understand. (laughs) Right. So that's what that reminded me. I was like, yeah, people do this. And that makes sense to me. (laughs) That episode, I I really enjoyed it too. Um, But also, I also seen the Medusans flying around. That was neat. But the entire time I'm watching the episode, I'm thinking, this is too happy. Something is going to happen by the end. And it, sure enough, it did. <laughs> Remind me what happened at the end? Uh, this is the reveal where... Um, um, oh, that's right. Fine Essentia uh, is undisguised uh, with her little robot, or her big robot. And the Diviner yeah. uh, knocks her out. Yeah, which means that there are now two of those robots around, two Dreadnoughts, right? Because there was also the one that belonged to Gwyn's dad. Oh, is that one still around? I just don't remember. I thought it was. I didn't. Uh, I, maybe they dis- disassembled it, but I don't remember that happening. All I remember is flying. The last time I remember that one is them flying around through space or at yeah, warp or mega warp, and it being on the outside of the ship. Oh, that's and right. That did happen. I don't remember anything more. If it huh. got destroyed, or if it just fell out of subspace, or what? Well, you know, when you go like many months between seasons of a show that's kind of okay mm-hmm. because the season is sort of an encapsulated story but when you go this long mid-season on hiatus it's a little bit more disruptive like discovery has had hiatuses but they're only like a month not six or seven i, just, I have the list episode listing up here prodigy premiered october 28th 2021 we have over a year to finish the first season <laughs> Oh, wow. I thought it started like in January of this year. Wow. But uh, yeah, you're okay. right. You're absolutely right. It so, went on hiatus after January of this year. Uh, yeah. And it took, it took a month and a half long break for Discovery too uh, that year. <laughs> so uh, maybe hopefully uh, season two will have so much more uh, togetherness. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The first five episodes aired between October and November, and then episode six through ten went January to f- to January in February, and then it picked up again in October. So the second half started a year after the first half. And again, I've brought this up on the podcast before. Why are they calling this one season? Why not just make it two seasons? Uh, yeah, I don't have an answer for that. I mean, uh, most they're... Star Trek shows mm-hmm. nowadays are ten episodes mm-hmm. per season. This one had twenty. I don't know. Anyway. We'll probably never know. Uh, <laughs> all right. Episodes I enjoyed. Uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, there were eight episodes <laughs> that we're uh, reviewing. So we went over the one you didn't uh, like. So you liked all the yeah. others. Um, basically, um, at least to some degree. And we had all the world to stage where we went on original series planet, <laughs> theme planet. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I liked that. I, we've seen stuff like that before where Star Trek influences a planet and they model themselves after the us. Uh, but this one was, I think what really changed my mind about this episode while I was watching it was near the end when one of the Enterpriseans said, we know we're not Starflight, but you don't need a ship to be Starflight. And I was like, oh, I felt like I was concerned that they were all suffering from this mass delusion. And it turned out mm-hmm. they're like, 
no, we know what's happening here. We just do this because it's aspirational. I was like, oh, that's that's actually really encouraging. I like that a lot with James T and Sewell. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, son. And son. <laughs> yeah. But it was kind of neat that they tied this to an actual character from original series. Yeah, I had to Google that because that was not yeah, a significant character. And not it's not and it's not like this planet is a spin-off of a particular plot point from the original series yeah uh it was just really neat yeah um, too too bad they couldn't get that actor back i he's probably dead now but probably but uh i still liked it and i loved yeah. all these like sulu and scott e and yeah Horu. wasn't <laughs> wasn't there an episode of voyager where a native species uh had gotten access like i think balana was trapped in a shuttlecraft because she, she'd like broken her leg and somebody was drilling her for plot points that they then turned into a play. Uh oh yeah 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 that was um the one where they basically the Greek tragedy. Yes yes I love that episode. Uh-huh. And at the very uh-huh. end, Bellana appeared in the play and she actually beamed out, even though they hadn't made first contact. Yeah 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 yeah. Ah, uh, that was a I remember maybe it's my own theater background, but I really liked uh-huh. that episode of Voyager, mm-hmm. and I was reminded of that watching. All the world's a stage. I mean, it's a fascinating concept, right? I, I get to see tragedy. It's basically a Greek play being played out of Star Trek. It was brilliant. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And Sprock. They had Sprock on that episode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what else did you uh, like? Uh, that episode was a lot of fun. I seen the port, the shuttlecraft, um, you know, going down. Not sad, but uh, mm. uh, let's see. I'm just skimming down the list of episodes here. Crossroads was the one where um, we got to see the fabulous Sakona the Rocketeer reprising his role as the outrageous Sakona. Yeah, he was a much older Akona than we are accustomed to. A little bit less outrageous in my opinion. <laughs> Truly outrageous. But you still enjoyed uh, him? Yeah, I got a kick out. I, mean, I was neat seeing him and actually reprising his role and I read, read an interview um, God, I don't remember much about I gotta reread that again. We can find the link. It was on StarTrek.com I think of him uh, about being approached to reprise his role and how much he loved it. And he was making some jokes too. Um, Aww. He, he was, he, he seemed like a, uh, Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Um, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just seems like a really good Billy Campbell. Bruce Campbell is the groovy Evil guy. Dead guy. Yeah. 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 I knew that was close. Uh, Billy Campbell. Um, he, he seems like a really cool guy. Um, same with the guy who reprised his role as Captain Jellico or Admiral Jellico. Uh, he was. He still tells his dad jokes. He he loves that meme. Uh, he's 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 aware of the Captain Jellico account <laughs> on Twitter, and he loves it because he is all about the dad jokes too. So <laughs> in the interview, he even gave one. I don't remember what it was now, but um, I love seeing them come back. I didn't recognize him when he first showed up. I was like, "Who is this admiral? Are we supposed to know who this is?" Mm-hmm. And then the next week, I must have just missed when they addressed him. And the next week, they're like Admiral Jellico. I was like, "Oh, I get it." because <laughs> um, you, know, you know there are only so many admirals in starfleet so if one is needed it has to be one we already know that's right that's right uh so this is the actual second episode we had with Kona because he met they met him on the in the neutral zone but uh here's the episode where we get uh jane we actually meets the kids um for the first time um like finally <laughs> their paths have crossed <sighs> Yeah, that occurred to me to be a little soap opera ish where like if oh, people yeah. would just talk to each other <laughs> you know like i i understand why gwyn ran away when she found out that the protostar was working with her dad like that's a reasonable reason to run away but everybody else was like can, can we just talk about this we're just kids mm-hmm. and we just want to join starfleet and we found this ship we didn't steal it we don't know where chakotay is who is that um the whole time the whole episode season i'm like you guys just figure out a way to throw a mess a uh, hand right something yeah and put it out the airlocks and like a like a tube from the bank or something like that, and they can, can retrieve it. Like, <laughs> I loved the uh, holodeck simulation where they fired the phasers using Morse code. Oh, that's I right. was like, that was... Uh, I'm like, that should work. It didn't work in the simulation, but I think somebody uh-huh. on the dreadnought, at, or is that what? No, that's not the dreadnought. The dauntless. I mm-hmm. think somebody on the dauntless would be able to figure out. Like, wait a minute, why are they intentionally missing us, and what is this pattern? I, I, I point it at a direction where there's no one. Right. And then like, uh not just yeah. fire off their bow, but like fire perpendicularly to them. Uh-huh. Like one percent. 
and right. just do 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 yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's that's morse code uh, i was wondering I, I just, like is that uh, morse code okay yeah that was a whole uh sentence so anyone has to translate that <sighs> do, 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 you must do, have compressed do. it yeah 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 it's in okay lots of t- tiny little bits yeah um, like maybe raw 13 compression <laughs> <laughs> um the holodeck episode i love that we had the um they got stuck in the holodeck um ghost in the machine oh yeah i was not a huge fan of that episode no i liked that one mostly uh, a big part of it was because gwen got to see um her quote-unquote dad um oh as the bartender and got to ha- as, uh-huh, and got to actually have a conversation with him uh i like that i also love the noir stuff in the black and white and it was murph up there singing uh yeah, the uh, Murph singing part was weird. It, it uh, made me wonder, like, is this a, is that part of the simulation, or can Murph just talk? That's, now? that's his fantasy. I mean, he wasn't actually talking. It was it was speaker, but he, his fantasy was be able to sing and be a lounge singer. In front of a oh, he was lip syncing. Uh, no, he was. He couldn't. He didn't have a mouth, so he couldn't. But his fan. I mean, everyone was experiencing their fantasies or their <clears throat> their time that they when they go to the holodeck on their own to enjoy life. We get um, zero solves puzzles. We get um, Jankum gets into fights. Murph goes and um, pretends to be a lounge singer, and so uh, that was another view into their psyches. Huh. And I, I thought that was really fun. <laughs> oh, I, I know we're bouncing around a bit, but I just want to go back and mention on the prelude, uh, Rock, mm-hmm. how her background she wasn't actually a oh, yeah. tournament fighter; she was an actor. Uh huh. I really liked that because a little kid having to fight for its life, that wouldn't be cool. But the fact that no. the, the knight she was fighting against was in on it, I liked that. Uh-huh. That, was, that was so fun. Yeah, a little, Until a, little, wasn't. a little bittersweet when she realized, like, uh-huh. oh, I can be the winner, but nobody wants me to be the winner. Uh-huh. But, uh-huh. but yeah, I, I like between the holodeck and even though i didn't like the holodeck episode as a story i liked that it gave us that insight into the characters as you just described along with the preludes which was the episode immediately before that i liked those ensemble episodes as opposed to the doll episode in the neutral zone uh um before before the film we had the mind walk episode where we had turnabout intruder happen again oh my gosh the- you had like the animation from it at the very end of the episode <laughs> We did. Yeah, they had a scene where, like, just like a Kirk and what's her uh, gal who tried to take his body. It, they had an image of both of them side by side, and like their oh. brains like going like this. And then they, right, did, right, it, right. they did that here too. And I'm like, oh, they just, I, I, I think I literally yelled at the monitor. It's like, did they just turn about intruder us? <laughs> or they did? I said they just did that. The two thoughts I had about that episode: one is we just saw this with Spock earlier this year in Strange New Worlds. But the more important thought I had about this episode that overrode any negative hackneyed tropes was that Kate Mulgrew must have loved this episode. I was thinking that too. She had to have so much fun. And she yeah. even got to bring up the salamander thing from Threshold. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that was the actor who plays Doll who said that because it was Captain Janeway in Doll's body. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But when Kate... Mulgrew was acting as doll in Captain Janeway's body. She was like, I'm just completely normal, just going for a walk. Oh, how do you drink this stuff? This is disgusting. I was like, oh my gosh. Or her doctor being like, we gotta get you coffee. We, you're off the tea. You're going back to coffee. <laughs> <laughs> don't you know who I am? Mm-hmm. No, we actually don't. <laughs> So that was a that was a doll episode I actually enjoy, but mostly because Kate Mulgrew got to really play around. Right. Yeah, and the actor who played doll wasn't acting like doll, so of course. He yeah. Like so it. that of course I liked so. it. <laughs> I was surprised though. I, I liked the part when doll went down to talk to hologram Janeway, and they, for the audience's benefit, like mm-hmm. superimposed actual Admiral Janeway, so we could see her oh, talking that to was, herself. That was so neat. One thing though is that like when hologram Janeway said prove you are the actual admiral and they shared a childhood memory why would hologram Janeway have that uh I mean reality reality no idea uh <laughs> but but it worked here uh for plot point obviously but uh sure. but 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 real life like th- there's no reason to have that go that far back unless she really wanted to unless she purposely put that in there 
Like, I oh. need a trigger word, a trigger thing, <laughs> to just in case. That could be. Because it's certainly not relevant to what makes her such a great admiral. You know, like, when they made the Doctor on Voyager, they didn't give him all of Zimmerman's childhood memories. Yeah. Uh, I mean, holograms have advanced since then. But I mean, like, this is a this is a Starfleet where they have passwords, like, one, one, two, three, four, Alpha, go. I mean, like, that's it. Like... <laughs> Oh, and and also that that ensign who was pretending to be human but actually wasn't, mm-hmm. she had like an like when she got onto the protostar, the protostar said like, "Oh, you can't do that." And ensign was like, "Ensign override." Yeah. And I was like, okay, "What? Ensigns what? don't have overrides. That's why they're ensigns." <laughs> what? You know, I was suspicious from her from the get go, and I'm like, I was, I, I think I even told Shar like, I think she had my be related to Gwyn somehow, like, like story-wise, not familial. I, I, I said like something about her, and and then like the next episode, all of a sudden like, and then she's like, ha ha. Um, I am also your people. <laughs> I thought when she first showed up, since time travel was at play, that she might be Gwyn from the future. Mm-hmm. But and I'm glad she wasn't, because I would have had an even worse headache then. Yeah. Um. So the, but I really enjoyed Mindwalk. Uh, and then Supernova, the last two episodes. Uh, I, I, so I'm not gonna lie. Even up to here, I, I, um, watching Prodigy for the last like months, I had forgotten it was even Thursday, and I didn't watch these episodes until like a few days later. Uh, because I just like not on my radar. Like, is uh, I was actually starting to enjoy these episodes, and I would still forget it was Thursday. Never happened with Strange New Worlds. Never happened with Disco, but Prodigy. But um, I didn't get to Supernova. It was a holiday weekend. And um, Shara was like, if you haven't watched Supernova yet, you should probably just wait and watch them both at the same time. Like, you got it. And so I did. I watched both at the same time while I was uh, running at the gym. And, uh, uh, oh, man, I really enjoyed those. I really enjoyed those. Uh, I got a kick out of that. But, um. Uh, just seeing them problem solved and work together, and the emotional moments of losing hologram Janeway, um, uh, and then the kids going to Starfleet. And like I knew exactly, like we have five, five of you are coming to Starfleet Academy, and I'm like, and Doll's like, oh, I don't get to go. And I'm like, it's not you, Doll. Don't be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like Doll, you're the star of the show. Of course, you're coming. <laughs> Oh. Um, so so, what was it you liked about those last two episodes? I was just saying, yeah, I liked the, the teamwork. I liked the, the teamwork, the the Janeway um, uh, goodbye. Yeah. Um, it's uh, seeing the starship porn, and even Jen Kampong. Oh. Yeah, when all of them were really Jen Kampong like, that's a whatever, blah blah blah, and that's a that that that, and that's that. All, all the kids are like naming off all these starship classes, or that's a Vulcan. Uh, whatever class and like <laughs> so they made it very clear to us that the defiant was there from deep space nine uh-huh or were there did, did it I, uh, I was watching on the very tiny screen did they actually show the words defiant or was it just that class of ship i pause it it said defiant okay well neat uh-huh but you are very good at picking up on subtleties that i overlook were there other ships there that we uh, recognized I, normally I, I had to go back and watch on a bigger screen it was watching on my phone screen uh oh, okay. there was i mean there was like the, i saw pictures like the thunder child or similar ones uh the akira class ship what's um, the thunder child uh, it was invented for uh one of the video games and they made it real in oh. first contact um uh That's it cool. is one that looks the most like the nx01 um uh for the viewers i will be sending a picture to ken in the chat but you maybe but um yeah it, it was one of my favorite classes classes of ship before um it actually it was ever existed um and uh there um oh nice you can see how much it looks like the nxl one like yes uh, um so i just look the uss thunder child uh looked at a viewer or listener not viewer um <laughs> <laughs> and it's that's one of my favorites it has been and yeah uh but I, again normally i look, I look up some of those things but i just didn't have a big enough screen to and i didn't go back to check it out but um yeah I, I, now i have to because i actually kind of forgot to do that uh this says that the thunder child was uh also in star trek picard uh 
Mm, I don't. They might have added it. It might have been in the whole. Remember when uh, they were at the um, Agnes Borg? Uh, they had like a hundred different Starfleet ships there. It right. Yeah. Was it, in that huge lineup. Yeah. Memory Alpha says the Thunderchild joined the Borg in a coordinated effort to deflect a massive energy burst from a newly forming transwarp conduit. There we go. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, they had a Sovereign class ship for the Enterprise to stand in for the Enterprise uh, E. I thought I saw that. Yeah, um, I didn't think it was the Enterprise. Make, I think that ship has been decommissioned by this time. The Enterprise E. So there was a lot happening in this episode. They uh-huh. showed that the construct could take over the ship's navigation and propel them into Starfleet space, but it couldn't take over their communications and just broadcast a hail. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I. I, I some things just had to like, sure, so you got it. Yep. <laughs> I will accept your caveat. <laughs> and also, I kind of thought, and I even mentioned this back when they attacked the space station earlier this season. I thought that this construct was kind of like a virus, where if it got into one ship, it would affect all ships. That's, that's how I felt, too. But that apparently wasn't the case, because when they destroyed the construct, everything went back to normal. And I guess yeah. that was implied by the construct showing which ship it was controlling at any given moment like it did mm-hmm. that like flux the visual, and all of a sudden, yeah. yeah yeah so i guess it was more like a remote control and if you destroy the controller then everything goes back to normal uh and so before they decided to destroy the ship in the previous episode they tried just like getting away from starfleet and they're like okay we got control over navigation again let's fly away and instead they just fly around all the ships that were there Mm -hmm. and you know it was really cool but it didn't get them farther away and when they eventually like stopped they're like oh we're all still right here that was not meaningful you know what we should have remembered this because the very first episode of the second a part three they met the space station that would have been its attempt uh, ability to connect to other viruses to you know like be a virus and spread yeah. itself. It didn't. So I guess. And I actually mentioned that in our last podcast. I was like, why did it stop at the space station? Why uh-huh. is that the only thing that was affected? And I guess now we know. In which case, what I would say is that Gwyn's dad made a really bad weapon. <laughs> uh, maybe they're like, oh no, time is running out. Oh, we have to. We have to choose. We don't have enough time to make it do that. We have so. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is just a beta version. You know, uh-huh. like when when we get to release candidate 1.0, we're going to have virus functionality, but we need to pre-sell the original version <laughs> to get the I funding mean, to create the final version. They're still smarter than the aliens in season three of Epis- uh, Enterprise where they test fire their weapon on Earth before they use the real fire weapon. Right. They could have used it on any planet. <laughs> Good job. Um, yeah, I, I liked it. I, mean, I like the connection to the augment thing overall, even if it's dull. Yeah, I, I like that they point out that he's not actually augmented. He's not superior in any way. Uh-huh. He's just, you know, like they, they don't outlaw uh, interspecies breeding in Starfleet. Uh-huh. And that's essentially what he is in a way. He's the product of 26 different species getting it on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, which, you know, by that time, there's probably lots of people out there. <laughs> Who fit that right, role. and they're letting them not go to Starfleet Academy, but basically, almost in a way, skip Starfleet Academy, kind of like Crusher did on TNG. Like he was wearing the red uniform before he ever went to Starfleet. Yeah, um, or they're like Red Squad, or they can do anything. Um, uh, they got they have firsthand experience that a lot of people don't have, so they get to just hmm. hang out with Janeway. Uh, so Janeway showed off a new protostar ship at the end. And this Mm -hmm. makes me wonder how this ties into Discovery because we saw the burn where all ships with warp capabilities exploded. Uh, Does that mean that all protostar ships have warp? Is this an alternative, an augment to warp? How does this work? Yeah, uh, I mean, okay. By this time, we see a lot of Delta Quadrant uh, peoples. uh, It's commonplace with the Kazon. We have... um, our one, our, our one ensign who helps Janeway. She was one of the people who was rescued in an episode of Voyager. And that cast member, uh-huh. that ensign, was played by Bonnie Gordon, who also does the mm-hmm. voice of the ship's yes. computer. Yes, yes. 
Um, uh, and so like Delta Quadrant is not this unknown anymore, even in this time period. Mm-hmm. And so actually it makes some things in Discovery make some more sense because um, they had maps of that whole region or whatever. But yeah, like this is me. I wonder if the Protostar is still like, is this what Starfleet uses when they don't have jump drives, um, mushroom drives in uh, the jump drive? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when they don't have that in the feature? Is it, are they using their own variants on the Protostar? Or is this the class that ends up uh, they having to mothball because something goes wrong? I, we, right. we just don't have that answer yet. I'm curious. I'm interested to see. Yeah, like, will this just be another form of propulsion we never hear about again? Mm-hmm. It's weird. Uh, like, it, like, if it weren't for Discovery jumping so far into the future, we could say, like, this is the most cutting-edge Star Trek show. This is the future. But now we have this other future that we know happens, and it's now creating challenges to make it all consistent, which has always been an issue for Star Trek. So, like, uh, yeah, I'm interested. I'm interested to see where that goes. Um, mm-hmm. I still like it when the nacelles are attached. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm interested to see. Uh, I, I love. I loved the use of the Dauntless class, where they um, they made a ship out of the fake ship um, uh, in Voyager. There was a fake ship in Voyager. <laughs> oh, the episode, the Dauntless in Prodigy, is um, Starfleet actually using an actual a uh, design of um, Ray Wise. Oh, that's right. That's right. He made a fake Star- a Starfleet ship, and Starfleet ended up making using that ship or Prodigy anyway. The show using that ship design I for do Janeway, that now. Admiral Janeway's ship. Uh huh. And so Brilliant. I don't know, I thought that was neat. Yeah. Um. Uh, I, I bring this. I bring these specifically up because I have a picture of the Protostar class on my screen at the time. So I'm like, so uh, I could talk endlessly about starships. So I'm not going to do that in Borer One. But uh, by the end of season one, I did actually start enjoying Prodigy, even if I forgot it was airing. So well, what, what changed? Do you think like just less focus on Doll? Every, everything we started talking about here, like let's focus on Doll. Uh, yeah. The story, the story evolved beyond just. I like seeing the show in the greater scheme of the Star Trek universe. Um, maybe if I had been able to binge everything uh, from the start, I might have liked Prodigy more. I, I don't know the answer to that for sure. But um, like uh, basically, Doll was what ruined the show for me. Uh, and that, that forced kiss, and then the kiss at the end, I hated it. I think it was a, did not need that. At, I don't think... Even if my preludes, like uh, my 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 usual against hetero uh, things in shows, um, I just don't think they need to romance these kids at all. Uh, it was in my notes to ask you about that because, like, when they <clears throat> were holding hands and just being affectionate, I kind of liked that. But both times that they kissed, I was like, "No way to take it back." Like, like when Doll forced that kiss on Gwyn in that moment of action and tension earlier on the protostar that seemed reasonable to me because it was not reciprocal. Like I could totally see doll misreading the situation and thinking, Oh, I'm the captain. Of course, my first mate is in love with me and being wrong. Like that all seemed totally on character for him. When she then did reciprocate at the end of the finale, I I just didn't get that. Anyone who was near me at the gym would have heard me literally go, oh, <laughs> at yep. the phone. I was so mad. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I mean, Gwyn does inspire loyalty. Like when Dahl was in Janeway's body and the, the Diviner released him slash her from sickbay. Uh, like I said, since you showed me such kindness, I'm letting you go. I would do anything for my daughter. And Dahl said, so would I. And mm-hmm. also, way back in the first half of the season, when they're on that plant planet, uh, there was that moment where the Diviner chose to go after the Protostar instead of Gwyn. And Dahl is the one who went back and saved Gwyn. Like, so mm-hmm. he clearly has some devotion for her. I feel like we saw a little bit of that turn around with the diviner because at the very end he actually tried to kill that other person oh, yeah, from yeah. the future to save his daughter yeah he, he got some sense finally smacked into him i think it was both some sense and at that particular point near the finale 
he didn't have to choose at that point between the protostar and his daughter because he could have had both whereas mm-hmm. earlier in the season it was one or the other but um uh the whole fight thing was neat and the, and oh the kids are reclaiming the ship too and the loss of communication i was so happy when i got to see captain gwen uh uh i was like yes make her the captain doll you get off that bridge stay yes. in the holodeck eat your ice cream um <laughs> <laughs> I, I liked the plea she made to all the aliens and I actually did get a little teary eyed because it was the sort of optimism that we need from Star Trek. And mm-hmm. so it was so disappointing when they responded positively to her hail and then it almost didn't matter because the nah. situation started getting worse anyway. Now, granted, in hindsight, they did end up saving lives like they did prevent ships from being blown up while a larger solution was worked on. But it was... Uh, at the end of episode 19, which was the cliffhanger, that moment seemed kind of hopeless. And I was yeah. not a fan of that. Oh, sorry. I, I just got myself upset. <laughs> about? <laughs> the kiss again. Oh, no. Free, you gotta memory, move on. Memory Alpha. Someone put, put wrote in, as Gwyn and Dahl say goodbye to one another, they share a very sweet kiss. No, it just they share a kiss. They don't. We don't need to add that extra flavor. And they even have a link to the word kiss. Where does that freaking go? Well, I mean, <laughs> I think they meant sweet as opposed to passionate. Ah, uh, no, they don't, no kiss. Uh, I'm gonna take uh, that. So it removes it. It removes it from the episode if I remove it from the entry on Memory Alpha. <laughs> okay, they do not share a kiss at all. It never happened. You imagine the writers. It. The writers claim that he thought about doing this, but I'll put a footnote. <laughs> <laughs> So at the end, a couple of things happened that I didn't quite understand. One is, well, I guess maybe three things. So Janeway was not able to copy herself. And I can kind of get that because the doctor from Voyager also was not able to transmit all of himself to the other ship in the episode. Was it Ship in a Bottle? Was that the name of the episode with Andy Dick? Um yeah so he like he's like i can't bring my opera with me because it's not there's too much data so i can kind of get that but it kind of also uh softened the blow a bit her sacrifice because admiral janeway was right there this isn't like the doctor on voyager and zimmerman who are physically the same actor but completely different personalities characters everything Mm -hmm. you know if one dies the other is not a substitute whereas with this like we have hologram Janeway and Admiral Janeway. They're like two versions of the same person. So I kind of feel like, oh, it is sad that we lost the hologram, but now we have the Admiral. So Kate Mulgrew is still here, and it's not a big difference. Yeah. Um, and and in the last few episodes, we didn't get as much hologram Janeway either. So I mean, I, kinda, I mean, we yeah, got she her was, a little bit. But she was bigger, more prominent in the beginning of the show. Yeah, she was compromised, so she just deactivated herself. Um, I thought it interesting that she had the command codes and I'm like, you are the computer. Like you don't have to pull up this visual mm-hmm. interface to work with the computer. You are the computer. Like, like, uh, like Leah Brom said, every time you touch the computer, you're touching me. <laughs> oh God. No. <laughs> <laughs> so when she's anyway. Yeah. And then they were in this, uh, they, they built themselves a little vessel, which is cool mm-hmm. because they showed that earlier in the season. But they were stuck in it for a month because I said no. one month later they crash land in San Francisco. I was like, yeah, I'm like, no, I, no nobody I, could I, find them for a month. And also, what did they eat? Uh, I mean, they must have had a, hol- or a, a food replicator on there. But I was just like, uh, we're going to b- pretend that part. We're not meant to think about this any further. Because yeah. <laughs> like, if you do, like, it falls apart. Like, where do they sleep? How do they go to the bathroom? How does this? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I mean, I have all those questions, but my. They're all answered by the question, why did it take Starfleet so long to find them? Like, mm-hmm. you, they should have more defenses that prevent a ship from crash landing on Earth in the first place. <laughs> like, they should have seen that coming a mile away. Especially after the Dominion attack. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, and, the third, yeah. and the third thing I don't understand, maybe this is just a teaser that'll be resolved in the future season, which is fine. But they show off the new Protostar ship, and somebody from Dahl's crew says, is that our ship? And Janeway says, oh, I have much bigger plans for us. And she walks away from the protostar. And I'm like, okay, so why are they showing us this protostar if that's not her plan? And second, what is her plan? 
it's it's meant to be a teaser. I guess I just I, 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 it was too vague to be a teaser. Like if they had shown the protostar and said, uh, like you're not gonna believe where we're going with this, that would be a teaser. But just saying like, oh, we got something up our sleeve. I was like, what? What, what does that even mean? Uh, oh, mean? that's a very common thing. Uh, uh, yeah, I was like, okay, yeah, all right, I'm ready. I'm ready, Admiral Janeway. Take me where you're going to take me. To your little surprise. Well, you know what? You bring up a good point. Somebody, I don't remember if it was in my work Slack or on Twitter or somewhere, they made the comment that they love that Paramount has created a sequel to Voyager and disguised it as a kid show. Uh huh. Yeah. Because yeah. Cause that's essentially what this is. Like, we have not seen yet cameos from tuvok or ensign kim or seven of nine or anything on this show maybe we will in the future but this is essentially like it's becoming more and more voyager as the show Uh goes on Uh, absolutely we uh something a lot of people were wanting um um and so like i'm very excited about that remember getting excited about seeing um the voyager g on discovery or whatever it was Mm -hmm. and so like that was like Kirsten Stewart, Kirsten, um, I'm drawing a blank on the author name. I'm drawing a blank on all names today. But uh, uh, one of our show writers, like her little love to Voyager, because um, she did um, uh, wrote Byer. a bunch of Voyager. Byer, Kristen Byer, Kirsten Byer, yeah. Um, she did a bunch of Voyager relaunch novels. And so uh, actually, I don't know if she's actually even working on Prodigy, I, um, which is like right up her alley. But anyway, um. So I'm glad we're getting more Voyager. Voyager is a show I think that deserved more than getting to Earth in the last 10 seconds of its show. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm glad we're getting this. I'm glad we're getting a sequel. Yeah. And I'm sorry that Gwyn is not going to be as big a part of it in the future because like you, she's one of my favorite characters. Oh, she's going to be a big part of it because they still got to get find home they're going to uh be going to the future they're they're yeah or no not future they're, they're gonna be finding her home she's gonna be a big part of season two still she's still with the crew i hope so if season two is all about saving chakotay i'm not as interested uh um yeah no no she'll be there she, she'll be like uh like oh no my ship that i'm using to go find my people is having troubles and jane was like Crew, we've got a rescue mission in our hands. We're gonna go get Gwen, and at the same time, we're also gonna go save Captain Chicote and get her to her home. Well, you know what might happen is they go fifty-two years into the future to find Chicote, and they find a like sixty-five-year-old Gwen, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and she'll be like, "Oh, I remember you from when I was a kid. I haven't seen you in fifty-two years." <laughs> uh, just like Doctor Who. Um, yeah, the, or the end of Picard season two. We're yes. like, oh, we haven't we haven't seen Doctor Gerardi in hundreds of years, mm-hmm. and now she's Borg. <laughs> so uh, yeah. no, she's she's going to be just as much as all our characters who left the Strange New Worlds left. They're going to be just as much of a part of the show um, in season two. Actually, I don't know if this is a tangent, but do we know what Star Trek is next? Uh, Picard. See Picard season three? I think that's in February, if I recall correctly. So very often, but not always, when one Star Trek show ends, the next one begins immediately. But this time we have like five, six weeks off. Uh, Actually, that was our trend in 2021. That was not the trend uh, normally. February 16th, Picard season three. Yeah. Get a month break if you you want to turn off your subscription to Paramount Plus for a month. (laughs) Turn off my annual subscription for a month. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm um, stuck. I can't. Yeah, that's the next one. Uh, we've gotten some teasers already from the official Star Trek. And, oh, I teased something to you at the beginning of the episode. Oh, I remember. You want to talk about Trek logs. Yeah. Now, so Is this going to be a spoiler? Do I need to turn off my headset? No. Uh, I wouldn't okay. get up to you otherwise. Because I know how you are. Um, <laughs> uh, that, that, that implies so much. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm going to double check while I'm talking here and make sure the Twitter account is, is the same as the Instagram account. Um uh, because on Instagram, under the account, yeah, Star Trek Logs. Um, yes, it is the same on Twitter. Oh, no, it's not the same on Twitter. I'll figure that one out. But um, on Instagram, Star Trek Logs, one word, is an account where they take um, 
like Kate Mulgrew did a bunch of these where she's doing an Admiral's log, like a 30 second Admiral's log, a minute long of the episode that just aired or is about to air, like a little preview. And um, so basically you get to hear Captain's log in between or talking about the episode. And so I, um, and it's really fascinating. You get to see an extra insight into the episode that just aired from uh, point of, points of views of the characters. And um, like, I actually was spoiled on what happened by the end of Supernova episode one, part one, because I caught that and it was her giving this, um, uh, doing a captain's log about like, tr- um, we need to get, or we need to try to figure out a way to um, stop this. And I hope no one, we can't stop the ships from coming in. And it was all this very dramatic thing. And it was very fascinating. Uh, so Star Trek logs. Um, I highly recommend it. Cool. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. It's Star Trek logs on Instagram. And uh, they're also, they're voice acted, but they're also all in text in case you can't, are in a spot where you can't read them or hear them. Excuse me. Cool. Uh, uh, I think you will really much enjoy that because uh, I do. I absolutely love them. So yeah, they started doing that with um, Prodigy. Okay, so this is a fairly new thing. Yeah, uh, cool. and they did a bunch of stuff. They have a, <laughs> scrolling back. They have a bunch of Discovery pictures and um, lower decks pictures. I think they were figuring out what this account was going to be for, and then they started doing these logs. <laughs> nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I. I don't have Instagram on my phone. I have an account, but I've never posted anything to it. I remember to log in maybe once a month and just see what's been posted. And then Twitter, I'm starting to wind down my use of Twitter after mm-hmm. everything that's happened the past few months. Uh, my my primary personal account, GameBits, I haven't published anything to that in weeks. And my personal account, KGagney, uh, which is for like non-geek stuff, like being a vegetarian and being a digital nomad. Uh, I'm still posting that occasionally, but um, I'm and I'm not looking at alternatives. Like earlier this year, I ended my podcast Polygamer, which you've been on many times. And my friend Kay, who has been on this show before, they reminded me that it's OK to end one podcast without starting another one. <laughs> and I think <laughs> the same rule applies to social media. Like I know a lot of people are looking at Hive or Mastodon or Tumblr, which is all great. And I certainly don't mean to dissuade anybody else. But I'm looking at it for myself as what else can I do with this time as opposed to being on a different social media. So I don't have like a, a link tree to say, hey, go follow me this other place now. But Twitter is somewhere I'm spending less time. But I will, you know, we will keep up the transporter lock account. Mm-hmm. Yep. And we post, uh, we, re, we retweeted a lovely photo of Jonathan Frakes of Santa Claus. Apparently. No one knows if he got hacked of the day or not, but he was saying like, hey, you can get a bunch of signed iPads from me. And everyone's like, Jonathan Frakes get hacked or is this real? <laughs> and we still don't know the answer to that. I, I am not. I just haven't looked back. But um, are you sure it wasn't uh, just somebody who paid eight dollars to have a blue check mark and pretend to be him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I just got a kick out of it. Whatever the story was. Um, That's weird. The uh, the topmost tweet on from him right now is a. Uh, gif of him from that tv show just saying it's false whatever that <laughs> maybe, sci-fi maybe show was like unsolved mysteries or something uh factor fiction oh okay yeah uh, anyway we could talk endlessly about lots of other things too but i think we've probably wrapped this up ken yeah i think so so we are going to be back for picard it remains to be seen with what quantity or degree we will be reviewing those episodes whether it's like every week or every other week or every third fourth you know week outside of strange new worlds i think modern trek is meant to be binged not week to week <laughs> i said it before uh it's just yeah are you saying you're not going to watch every episode of picard as it comes out i will but like when if someone doesn't watch it right away my recommendation will be to like no this is much uh, if it's something that I would recommend people binge it, not to watch it all or not watch it week to week, except for strange new worlds. These shows are meant to be continuous story. We've had our frustrations with them because like the pacing feels weird week to week. What's this mystery? We're not going to tell you um, of that discoveries problem. Uh, yeah. 
binge these shows, binge these shows except for Strange New Worlds. That that one's meant to be weekly. Yeah, well, I yeah. will probably still watch Picard every week. Yeah, I and I'll probably too. and I'll Everyone probably still is. complain about the middle six episodes where nothing happens. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I know that there have been teasers and trailers for Picard season three that I have not watched because they reveal things about which characters are coming back and which aren't. And I just want to be surprised by that. Uh So if I can continue to avoid those spoilers for another six weeks, uh, this will be good. Oh, also a fun fact. So when Picard season three debuts, I'm going to be in Budapest. Oh, and I'm going to be there for like a month and a half. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what that means for time zones as far as us either watching Star Trek or recording the podcast. Uh, or I, I presume, can I even watch Picard in Budapest if I have I'm like sure my Apple can. TV and my own Paramount Plus American account? I'm sure you can. <laughs> Maybe I just need to use a VPN or something. But I don't know. I've never been to Hungary before. I've never mm-hmm. watched Star Trek in Hungary before. Yeah, so... <laughs> okay. Well, we will figure it out. I'm sure that they have Star Trek over there. Yes. They have heard of Star Trek. (laughs) (laughs) Any closing thoughts? Any final remarks? Uh, Well, the red lights turned off, so I uh, think everything's safe and clear now. You're no longer in a red light district? Uh, No. uh, The whole... Oh. Remember the beginning of the episode? Ten hours ago, I was making a reference to Supernova. Oh. The ship was taken over. Uh... (laughs) So now you've resumed control of your own estate. Fantastic. Uh, we, we resume control of the transporter lock ship together, Ken. Whoa. So the last hour wow. was just us being told what to say. Wow. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for sticking with me there. <laughs> I try. I work on it. I have short. I have the memory of a goldfish. Oh, look, a pink castle. Oh, look, a pink <laughs> castle. Wow. So I'm working on it. Great. Well, so I'm whatever glad... problem there is out there, they've fixed it so we can send this episode off without worry. And on that note, <laughs> hit it. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave a review on iTunes and keep your hailing frequencies open by following us on Twitter at Transporter Lock or subscribing to our podcast and email newsletter at transporterlock.com. <laughs>